Somebody come get her. She's participating in a highly technical and difficult art form like a stripper. Welcome to my new series, dot dot dot, and pole dancing. Well, it's super fun to show you my tips and tricks and my progress, I've been wanting to talk about big ticket issues in the pole dancing community for a long time now. So these are gonna be longer form discussion videos with some clips inserted here or there. If that's not your jam, that's fine. If it is, then buckle up because today we're talking about sexuality and pole dancing. In this video, I will first be discussing sexuality as sexiness, sensuality, the physical act of using your body for something sexual. Then I'm going to be discussing it in terms of sexual attraction and orientation, i.e. gay, straight, etc. When I said I was setting up a pole in my house, a friend asked, so you're gonna put on a show for all the neighborhood boys? They're gonna watch you through the window? Are you gonna charge them? Several friends have asked me if I'm making an OnlyFans with varying degrees of sarcasm in their voice. Some people ask me incredulously, your dad lets you pole dance? When you search for a pole on Amazon, a bunch of the results are labeled as stripper pole. There's an assumption that you shouldn't tell your family that you pole dance, you know, grandma can't take it. Okay, some strippers pole dance, some pole dancers strip, some strippers never get on the pole, some pole dancers never strip. So what's the problem here? Here's a photo of me playing on a trapeze. I'm in a little outfit, it's a horizontal apparatus. Oh, what a cute girl, she's having fun. A vertical apparatus, select, call the preacher. Listen, there are some activities that require certain amounts of clothing. It's literally not safe to pole dance if you're wearing a bunch of clothes unless you shell out hundreds of buckaroos for specialty sticky leggings. You will slide off and you might get hurt. I used to fence. You have to wear a protective coat and a protective mask to shield your body and face from the point of the sword that's coming at you. Did I become a prude because I put on extra layers of clothes to do this physical activity? No. So then why do I become a slut when I take off extra layers of clothes to participate in a different physical activity? I need to be very clear here. There is nothing wrong with being a stripper or a sex worker. That's a very important part of this discussion, is that in our haste to clear pole dancing's good name as a sport and an art, we need to not trample on some of its founding members on our way. It's still a sport and an art if a person in nipple pasties and a g-string is spinning around getting bathed in dollar bills under the neon lights of the club. It's still a sport and an art if a person in an expensive costume is performing in a million dollar theater in Russia in front of a panel of esteemed judges. I've noticed that some of us are in a big hurry to distance ourselves from strippers only to turn around and profit from the clout or the intrigue that stripping might bring. I've seen YouTube thumbnails like putting a stripper pole in my bedroom or do I have an OnlyFans? And then when you click on the video, it's like, oh no, I would never be a stripper. I respect myself too much. Or I guess every girl has an OnlyFans now, but that can never be me. Hey, look. I'm not against getting some free clout. If you look at my thumbnails, I'm obviously trying to get your attention. I'm like, pole dancing on your period. <laughs> but I just, I think it's weird that the same people who might get offended at the suggestion that they are a stripper are then piggybacking off the idea of being a stripper to boost themselves while also shitting all over being a stripper. You know what I mean? It all sort of goes along with this idea that in our society we expect women to perform sexuality and then when women use their bodies in a sexual way we turn around and criticize them. It's like, do we want women to be sexy or not? Pick a lane, you know? We need to knock this off. Strippers and sex workers are some of the least respected people in our society today and they're doing dangerous work and real work. We can't have it both ways, enjoying the attention from insinuating that we're strippers while also insinuating that being a stripper is bad. Another important note, the larger the body, the more immediately it's sexualized. A small bodied person in a bra and underwear will get a very different response from someone bigger, particularly if the parts of them that are bigger are the breasts or the butt. These bits might not even stay in place in a bra and underwear, so despite the small person and the large person wearing virtually the same outfit, the larger person is going to be perceived as trying to be sexier or maybe even slutty. And while all bodies can and will be sexualized when it comes to pole dancing, I would be remiss if I did not mention that black and brown bodies are usually the ones getting punished for it, losing their access to social media through their content being constantly flagged, which has only become worse after the Senate passed laws to ostensibly stop online sex trafficking that usually just only end up targeting sex workers. 
The intersectionality of race, gender, size, and sexuality makes pole dancing, especially sharing your pole dancing, increasingly complicated for someone who isn't just a goofy white girl on the internet. If you have more information to add about the areas I'm ignorant about, I would love to see your comments below. Let me read you some of the usual comments you might find on a pole dancing video. Pole dancing is a really hard sport too, and not just some stripping. The stigma of pole dancing needs to go away. This routine shows that pole dancing and the dancers are not just for strip clubs. I've always thought pole dancing had to be like super sexy, but this was incredibly graceful and told a story. It's so amazing that these beautiful women can take something that has been stereotyped as trashy throughout the ages and make it so beautiful that sometimes I can bring a tear to your eye. These are the kind of backhanded compliments I'm talking about that try to elevate the art of pole dance by pushing down those who are making their living through using it in an erotic way, or stripping or selling their footage on OnlyFans. Take my trapeze example again. Would anyone ever show up in the comments of one of those videos and say, damn, I hate that this is only associated with strippers. It's actually so hard. Like, yeah, trapeze is hard. Did you ever doubt that it was? Why are we all so shocked that pole dancing is difficult and requires a lot of training and skill? Is it because we think it's just a stripper thing? And there's no way strippers could commit to the art? Because it only becomes artistic when the dancer isn't stripping and only then you can see the value in it? And yes, I'm being a bit reductive for hyperbole's sake. I just find it so odd that when I was really into silks and rope, which are two other vertical apparatuses, nobody made comments about me making an OnlyFans or quips about me doing it to be sexy or just for show. But as soon as I started doing pole, which I have found to be the most difficult apparatus, these comments started up. For example, when I was naming my YouTube channel, I was gonna go with Kelsey Climbs the Pole. You know, speaks to upward movement, positivity, momentum. And then I was told there's no way I could call it that because people know what pole insinuates and I would get a lot of views from men, but they would be disappointed when I didn't give them what they expected. So already we have can't even put the name of your aerial apparatus in your YouTube channel because people will think it's a sex thing on the board. I would hope that somebody could look at a thumbnail, perhaps use a mere context clue to figure out that pole here insinuates pole, not something nefarious being used for sexy things, but you can see just how immediately this gets sexualized. And like, to be honest, a lot of the time pole dancing is really not sexy at all. For me, at least most classes or training sessions involve me like grunting, sweating, slipping off the pole with that like sound, I'm like crashing into my mat, I'm like farting while doing jumping jacks, I'm usually wearing a high compression sports bra with some shorts that are like 10 years old rolled up a bunch of times, my underwear sticking out of the top, it's, it's not sexy. But part of me can understand where people are coming from. Pole dancing is the aerial art that is most about how your body looks while you're doing the moves, not how the moves look that you're doing with your body. What I mean by this is for example, if you're doing a silk drop that involves a lot of moving the fabric around, the dynamic movement of the drop itself, and the way it all plays into the use of the apparatus. Pole dancing involves more of sticking the move, therefore showing off the position of your body, and then holding it for X amount of time or X amount of rotations, almost like you are a very bruised and sad rotisserie chicken. And because you have to wear minimal clothing, your minimally clothed body and its positioning take center stage. But again, how did we decide that was a slutty thing? The naked or minimally clothed human body should not be, I would argue, automatically sexualized. We wear little swimsuits to the beach because we want to swim around in the waves. Kids run around half-dressed all the time. If you're working out and it gets hot, you might take off your shirt. When do we cross the line from, yeah, that seems like a normal amount of skin to show to me, to, oh, damn, that's what strippers do. This segues me into my next segment discussing sexuality as referring to identity or orientation. I've noticed there's an assumption of heterosexuality, particularly performative and heightened heterosexuality with pole dancing. Stick with me here. Remember how I was just asking where the line is between accepting an unclothed body and suddenly sexualizing it? Is that line when you take a body and put it on a pole? Is that line when you put that body on a pole in front of classmates or a camera? Is that line when you put that body on a pole 
specifically to be looked at? Is it when you perform a trick for a class made up of all women? Is it when you first show that trick to someone besides a woman? Is it fine to have the recording on your phone, but if you post it on Instagram, you're thirsty? Is it slutty as soon as a man looks at it and gleans enjoyment from it? Oh, oh, we might have a winner. I mean, for goodness sake, the move where you sit on your hand and straddle your legs is commonly referred to as the hello boys. Look, I know what you're thinking. Kelsey, you read so much into things. Why can't you just let people enjoy things, even if they are heterosexual things? To which I say, you're probably right, but doesn't it speak to a larger trend when one of the moves that shows your crotch is literally named as a greeting for men? I'm gonna sneeze into my mic. A common assumption is that all pole dancers are either straight women or gay men, which either way means the intended audience is men. Because pole dancing isn't for ourselves, but for others, you know. We know the male gaze. We are intimate with the male gaze. Pole dancing is only being done for men to see, for male eyes, as though anyone who's not a man would not find it cool or sexy or attractive, as though the whole point of the sport is to show off for men. Let's go back to my friend's comment that I was going to attract all the neighborhood boys who would stand at the window and watch me pole dance. Do you think he would have said that if I told him I was taking up Pilates or boxing? I used to live in a house with an aerial rig in the backyard, and sometimes when I played on the silks, neighbors would stop and watch. But I don't think that's the innocent way that my friend meant this comment. So why, when you put up a pole, are you suddenly inviting male attention? Again, let's remember our stripper friends. I've seen some really cute videos of strippers teaching each other moves, saying things like, oh, the men love this one, or they'll really throw their dollars for this one. And that's perfectly fine. They have a mostly male clientele, they know their mostly male clientele, they know what these mostly men like, and they're doing everything they can to secure those dollars. Awesome, yes, we love to see it. But why do we assume that every Jane Doe in her first pole dancing class is trying to do the same? Maybe she is in pole dancing class to become a stripper, to which I say, awesome, go for it, Jane. But I would say probably 90% of your peers in a pole dancing class are not trying to become a stripper, they just want to learn a new apparatus. I want to talk to you about queer women for a second. And in this case, queer women encompasses any woman or femme who feels attraction to other women or femmes. Like I mentioned before, the big assumption is that we pole dance not for ourselves, but for others, specifically male others, specifically ones that we are hoping to attract. What about people who aren't attracted to men at all? You might just get completely forgotten in the conversation. If you announce you're taking up pole dancing, you might get a lot of, ooh, which guy are you going to impress with this? Or, ooh, I bet hubby likes you taking pole dancing classes. Are a horde of faceless neighborhood boys going to watch you through a dusty window as you fall into a mat over and over, etc., etc.? Man, I'm really harping on that window thing. You might announce that, actually, you have a girlfriend, and that might fall into some awkward silence because people don't know what to do with that information. And listen, People who aren't men definitely find pole dancing cool and sexy and attractive and awesome, but how often are moves called hello lesbians? When the default assumption is straight, it limits our imagination as to who we could be doing pole for. Okay, and then here's the big point I'm trying to make. Let me see if I can get it right. Why do we assume people are doing pole dancing for anyone else? We don't wander through the gym going, uh -huh. Who are you lifting all those weights for? Okay, yeah, no, people do that to women all the time. So let me try a different example. When I was doing fencing, nobody was coming up to me going, ah oh, ha who you were learning to fence for? Inigo Montoya? They just accepted that I was wanting to learn a different skill or to increase my strength. That's why the presumption of heightened and performative sexuality in pole dancing is extra weird for me because it's tied to the presumption that you're not doing it for yourself. But it's all relative. You could and you probably will end up in a class with nothing but supportive peers who are super happy to hear that you've got six boyfriends or a single wife or any combination of the two. Sorry. But what about the folks who have and want none? Let's talk about asexuality. Asexual people either do not feel or feel a greatly reduced sense of sexual and or romantic attraction. Sex and relationships, not at the top of their list. Sexual concepts, movements, or ideas may range from being an interesting theory to being something absolutely repulsive to an asexual person. 
So stick an asexual person in a class with hello boys and constant references to sex, relationships, and horniness, and what do you get? It's a common feeling for asexual people to feel just a little bit left out, like everyone's speaking in an accent they can't quite pick up, or everyone's sharing a joke amongst themselves that they've told so many times they don't even bother to repeat the punchline. So an asexual person in a poll class may feel a disconnect if all the other members are like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to show my husband, or like, yes, sexy, put that video on your Bumble profile. Even doing floor work, which is any movement that is not on the pole, may feel different for an asexual person if it involves a lot of straddles, thrusting, or that weird thing where you reach your hand between your legs and like, feel around. Again, remember that these are just blanket statements. Some asexual folks might have a whale of a time doing the, the hand between the legs feel around thing. They might love being called sexy or being hyped up about their bumble profiles. It's something to be aware of though, if you are an asexual person in a hypersexualized sport, that it might feel just a little bit more uncomfortable when you first begin. But you are welcome and you are valid. I want to briefly touch on touch since we're talking about asexuality. Some people, <clears throat> me, are not big on being touched and that can be a prominent feature of pole class. And listen, Kelsey's of the world. If your instructor needs to touch your leg to get you into the right position when you're upside down, to put it bluntly, you're gonna have to come to terms with that. But that's just something to be aware of. Your touch aversion might be challenged in pole class. Don't be afraid to let your instructor know, but do be aware that you're probably gonna have to work through it. And you may be expected to touch others. Some studios spend the whole semester working up to a big performance, and the one that I was training for, it was a group performance where we had to share a pole with another person, had to link our legs together, do stuff like that. And the other people were wonderful. They were all supportive. Nobody was weird at all. It just was kind of like being the one kid in class who hates group presentations because you'd really rather just work by yourself, but they make you do it in a group anyway. It's kind of how it felt. So again, be aware that you might be asked to touch others in pole class if you have a touch aversion. It could be a great chance to get out of your comfort zone and is definitely something to keep in mind about this sport. So, we know that a lot of the sexual elements of pole dancing are from outside influences that assume less amount of clothing equals slut. Sorry. We know that some of the sexual elements come from inside the pole world, in classes, movements, or among your peers. We know that this sexual element has varying effects on everyone, strippers and students, straight people and queer people, including asexual people. Am I really about to sum up this long ass video by saying it's all relative? Um, yeah, I think I am, kind of. If someone makes an uncomfortable comment to you about your pole dancing, try to not rush into defending yourself by saying, well, I'm not a stripper, geez. Maybe try something more like, yep, I'm into pole dancing now, it's great. Remember your varying degrees of privilege as a person who practices pole dancing, and please don't try to elevate yourself by pushing the marginalized down further. If you're in pole class, remember and honor your identity. Don't be afraid to let it show or to shelter yourself depending upon how safe you feel. Your safety and enjoyment should be a number one priority when it comes to pole dancing. I look forward to the day that anyone of any sexual identity can feel welcome and valid in pole spaces, and I think that day is gonna be soon. And finally, we are all part of this community, which means we can shape it. You just sat through this whole video and maybe it made you think. I know that I'm gonna to continue to check my assumptions and privileges when it comes to pole dancing so I can uplift everyone around me. So, sexuality and pole dancing. A beast, but we got through it. Oh, if you'll excuse me, the neighborhood boys are at the window and they're asking for popcorn.